Okay, so we've taken the bike out of the box and as you can see, it's well protected with its uh, protective packaging. What you'll notice is you have the bike in one section which is pre-assembled and we have a box labelled spare parts which actually just contains the pedals. Tools that we're going to need for assembly are two Allen keys, a 5mm Allen key and a 6mm Allen key, a knife or a pair of scissors and an adjustable spanner. So we need, uh, I've got two here with me, but it's a 15 millimeter spanner. Okay, so I'm going to start by removing all of the protective packaging. You can see that it's uh, attached with some fairly heavy duty zip ties. So just take care when you're undoing this, but either go through it with a knife or go through it with a pair of scissors. And the front wheel, which we'll assemble onto the bike in a few minutes, is uh, contains two protective covers on the side of the wheel that are attached to the nut we just remove those remove the cardboard packaging as well and then we'll come back to the front wheel in a second right okay so we've removed most of the protective packaging and as you can see we now have the bike ready for assembly so what I would point out is that uh, there are two plastic plugs which are inserted one into the seat post and one into the main headset and there's also a protective spacer which is in between the front forks which can come out in a minute what I would suggest the next step is to insert the seat post and using the five millimeter allen key just tighten that so that it's uh, going to stay securely in place we'll come back to that later on the final check but the seat post is now attached to the bike Okay, so now I'm going to put the handlebars into the frame as well. So in order to do this, you'll notice on the pre-assembly, um, we have the brakes already connected. What I would recommend is that you just simply unclip the brake cable from the rear brake. Take the handlebars and then they drop in. Now you can see on here, there's also a protective cover at the bottom of the handlebar stem which we need to remove. Now this is quite difficult to take off and you need to take some care with this but uh, you'll probably need a knife. It's a plastic cover and it does need to come off in order to insert the handlebars so it can be quite tricky but with some care try and remove that plastic cover and you'll see that comes off to expose an adjustable uh, bracket on the bottom of the handlebar stem. So in order to make this section easier we'll turn the handlebars round and this will need to drop in. Now you may well um, notice that that won't go in on the pre uh, in terms of how the bike arrives pre-assembled. It will need to be loosened off in which case you will need the six millimeter allen key and just gently loosen the nut at the top of the handlebar and that will allow you as you can see when I'm doing that it makes the adjustment on the base here so it's just a bit of a uh, couple of turns slide the handlebars in and then re-tighten so that is a self tightening screw that we just want at the moment again we'll come back to that for final adjustments but that just locks the handlebars in place Okay, the next section I would suggest then is that we need to reconnect the rear brake. So in order to do that, I'll flip the bike over so that we can see this from underneath. And we need to pull out the cable, which is under tension because it's pre-connected. Pops back into the brake lever and then runs down the front. And you'll notice that there's a groove cut in both of those sections. It slots back in under tension, pull that across, and that brake is now fully operational. So while we have the bike upside down, it's quite stable, we'll connect the front wheel. So we remove the spacer from the front forks. Okay, so I'm going to loosen the nuts on the front wheel, and you'll notice there are two locking nuts and there are two safety washers as well. And in order to insert the wheel into the bike, I'm going to need to decouple the front brake, which means just popping out the cable 
like so. That releases the brake pad so that we've got enough room to drop the front wheel in. That fits in really nicely. The safety washers sit on the outside of the frame and you'll notice if you can get in very tight to that, that there is a, a cutaway section on the front frame that the washer fits into, tightened by hand. We'll come back to that with the spanner, same on the other side. So we've got both wheels now fully attached, handlebars and seat post in place. Now for the pedals, so I'll turn the bike over to its correct position and you'll notice on the pedals we have uh, small stickers, one with left, one with right. So with the bike in the uh, pointing in the direction of travel, I'll attach the left pedal, which I'll do by hand to start with and come back to and tighten in a few minutes. Okay. Right, so there we have our bike now fully assembled, but it's important obviously before before any child is riding the bike to make sure that we've gone through a very quick safety check to ensure that all of the locking nuts are tight and are ready for use. So the first thing to do is to make sure that we have alignment on the front wheel with the handlebars. So in order to do that, I would uh, check probably either from the top or from the back to make sure that the front wheel is totally in line with the handlebars. And if we're happy with that, using a six millimeter Allen key to tighten the locking pin on the handlebars, doesn't need to be over tightened, but clearly needs to be secure. Okay, then we go back to our seat post and we make the necessary adjustments in terms of height. Obviously I can't do that with you now, but just make sure that the seat post is in securely. So again, tighten the locking bolt that's on the seat, seat post and then come back to the pedals for which you'll need a 15 millimeter spanner. But I've got a full size pedal spanner here for an adult bike, but it's a 15 millimeter spanner with the use for tightening the pedals and also for checking the wheel nuts. So once the pedals are tight, which they are, I'd recommend we flip the bike over again so it's easy to do and just make sure that the locking nuts on the wheels are also nice and tight and in place because we've only done those by hand so far. So we lock those in place prior to any child riding the bike. Front and back. Okay. And there is our complete bike. Okay, so we've got our finished, fully assembled bike. And it's critical, obviously, before any child rides the bike that we make sure our brakes are fully operational. Now, you will notice that they, the pre-assembled bike comes with the brakes already assembled, but um, I'm just gonna talk you through the safety checks before you take the bike out onto the road. Okay, so in the event that you've assembled the bike and you find that the front wheel is not running freely with the brake off, then we can make some fine adjustments. The first area to look at is actually on the brake lever and you'll notice that there's a screw which we can adjust in or out. And by adjusting it in means that the brake calipers will actually move further away from the rim. And what you should find is that with a simple adjustment, the wheel will run freely. You can use that for fine adjustment at any point. And the same applies to the back brake. So in order to shorten the reach of the brake lever, if it's necessary, you can always tighten the screw here that you can find on the inside of the brake lever. And you'll notice that without adjusting the brakes, the brake lever will move towards the grip for a smaller handhold. And back out. Same applies to front and rear brake. Okay, so there's another brake adjustment that I can demonstrate to you in the event that there's rubbing on the wheel. As you can see here, the front wheel is currently rubbing. If you notice on either side of the front brake caliper, there are two screws. And by simply adjusting these, by tightening them, you affect 
the distance that the brake calipers have on the rim. So I'm just going to tighten this up and you'll notice that that then moves away from the wheel, allowing it to run freely. Same on the front and on the back brake. Okay, so to finish the simple bike check uh, and a useful way of remembering what to do is we call it the M bike check, which we start with the front wheel, ensure that the nuts are tight, go to the handlebars, ensure that the central locking pin is secure and the wheels are aligned. Double check the pedals to make sure that the nuts are tight. Come back up to the seat, seat post, height adjustment, and then finally back down to the rear wheel and the locking nuts on the rear wheel. Final point to mention on the bike is tire pressure. And as you'll notice, they are pre-inflated to the recommended level. You'll notice on the tires, there's some detail written on the inside of the tire, which gives you the recommended tire pressure as a rough guide, we're looking for something like the pressure you'd find in a tennis ball. Don't need to be overly inflated. The harder the pressure, the less grip that the bike actually has on the road. So what I would recommend is something similar to a tennis ball pressure. And then we're ready to go.